have always been a good game. I love playing in the snow as much as any other young kid. Sledding, skiing, inner tubing, so on and so forth. But I didn't actually settle for building snowmen. If you look closely at that picture, you'll see that a, that is actually an anatomically correct snow woman with pine cones for breasts. I had creative interpretations for just about everything. Fortunately, I had parents who smiled, laughed, and took a picture for posterity. When I refused to order off the children's menu, they said, okay, and let me mix and match the adult menu. When I refused to sit at the kids' table, they said, okay, and switch places with me. When I came home after my first day of kindergarten, and my principal called my mom, saying that I had tried to rearrange the classroom to make it more efficient, she smiled. The principal just didn't understand that I was trying to help. By the time that I got to primary school, I was a pretty darn independent child. I'd grown up with parents who allowed and even encouraged my, my creative sides and didn't force me into a single box. I was a pretty square peg in a pretty round hole. And as you might expect, I didn't last very long. By the end of third grade, I had moved on. I went to outside of school for fourth grade and didn't really work so well either. I went back to public school for fifth grade and it really wasn't a great experience. All I learned from daily dittos and coping with children who were misbehaving was how to deal with a rotten environment, which is a really valuable skill if you're going to spend the rest of your life sitting in a cubicle, but I wanted more from my life. So I became an unschooler, the self-directed form of homeschool. While other kids were sitting in class, I went out and found mentors, I built businesses, I helped build a library, I worked on political campaigns. I attended conferences. I lived in France. I organized collaborative learning groups and worked at startups in Silicon Valley. Essentially, I hacked my education. I leveraged the resources of the world around them and turned them into a cohesive learning program. After years of marching to my own drum, it is my contention that we over-rely on the validation of others. Everyone thought my parents and I were crazy for not going to school. But ultimately, I knew that the choice that I had made was right for me and my learning style. And I didn't care what anybody else thought. I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to what other people say. I'm not saying to ignore people. But you have to listen and understand where they're coming from. But you shouldn't let that judgment interfere with your choices. Back in 1969, psychologists at Duke University found that among incoming college freshmen, SAT scores actually predicted success in the classroom, but that ideation, the number and uniqueness idea of ideas, was a much better indicator of lifetime accomplishment. Last year, in an article titled The Creativity Crisis, Newsweek found more data to support this thesis. In 1958, Ted Forthrock was a third grader, he was eight, when he and 400 other kids from Minneapolis completed a set of porn tests designed by E. Paul Torrance. These tests were a set of creativity tests. For example, Ted was given a fire truck and asked how many ways he could improve it. He rattled off 25 possible improvements, including adding a removable ladder and springs for the wheels. Over the 50 years, since this data was originally collected, scholars have been tracking the success of these individuals. They've been tracking patents earned, grants awarded, papers published, businesses founded, business sold, money earned, so on and so forth. They've been looking at recitals and dances and book tours and shows. They've basically been tracking success in all the different ways. And when Jonathan Flocker at Indiana University reanalyzed his data last year. What he found was that there was a three times greater correlation to lifetime accomplishment with childhood creativity than for childhood intelligence. Today, Ted is an independently wealthy entrepreneur. He built and sold three medical products companies and was a partner in three more. One of his innovations was a drug in internal medicine that is administered orally that is administered through the skin, like spring aspirin on your skin. Sounds pretty crazy, right? People must have called him crazy for doing that. But he was so sore of himself, 
he didn't let the validation or the judgment of others sway him off course. Imagine if he had. So now, as leader of the oncology movement, when I write on CNN that college is a waste of time, or go on national TV and say that college is for suckers, I don't care how many times my Wikipedia page is vandalized, how many nasty emails I get, how many times I'm called a stoner on TechCrunch. It really doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. As much as I hated Mark Twain when I was a child for wanting to shut kids up in boxes when until they, were, they were 20. Oh, wait, I'm not 20 yet. Um, he did say some wise things. His words, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect, has never rung truer. If you don't want to be part of Generation Limbo, that my friend Jenny recently profiled in the New York Times, the generation of people who are going off to college to get a degree, graduate, and order as bartenders collecting welfare checks, I challenge you to stand up for yourself. The next time that somebody tells you that you're doing the wrong thing, that you're shooting yourself in the foot, that you can be patient with the occasional tedium of personal development, say no. Stick your tongue out. Of course, that you're going to choose where you're planted. But you're going to shoot yourself in the hand if you want. But you're going to enjoy the roller coaster of personal development. Why is it supposed to be fun, then? Ultimately, life is a field trip. But only if you know what you want. Ultimately, the only person that you need to rely on for validation is you. Not your parents. Not society. Not your friends. Stick your fingers in your ears, turn out the naysayers, find your internal compass, and you can play in the future. Thank you.